Welcome to Dare to Leap, a conversation and community supporting women just like you to gain the freedom, flexibility, and financial security you desire and deserve with CEO and founder of Virtual Expert Training, Kathy Guggenauer. This is Dare to Leap, and now here's the powerhouse tiara-wearing Kathy Guggenauer. Julie Trumbly is our guest today. Julie is a tech virtual assistant and owner of Tackle Your To-Do. After attending a personal development conference in 2019, Julie realized she was made for more than being an employee for someone else. Oh, Julie, you're singing my song here. (laughs) A month later, Julie started her expert VA training and became a certified virtual expert in my program in April 2020. Having full faith in herself and in the program, Julie dared to leap and gave her two-week notice on March 13th, 2020. Yeah, the day pretty much most of the U.S. shut down due to COVID-19. That is a good dare to leap there, Julie. And she lives in Springport, Michigan with her husband and, oh my goodness, six spoiled cats. Julie, welcome to the show. Thank you. Happy to be here. I am super excited to have you here. And um, everybody, if you are not looking at this on YouTube, I invite you at some point, you can do it now, or you can wait until you listen to this and then go check it out. Go look on YouTube because I have my favorite tiara on today. And Julie has her favorite hair color on today. Her favorite color is purple, and it looks awesome on you, Julie. Thank you. Got to have some little sass in in the in that to go with the attitude. <laughs> Julie, Julie has. Um, I know Julie personally because she's part of my program. I've watched her grow. She came in very confident and full of life and fun, and has just continued to grow. I also love your T-shirt. You want to tell everybody what your T-shirt says? It says, "I love my boss. I'm self-employed." <laughs> <laughs> you know, we all are supposed to love ourselves right. and it would be really nice if we loved our boss. And when you're self-employed, two for one. That's right. <laughs> yeah. <Bonus. laughs> yeah. So Julie, you know that there are a lot of people out there listening to this who are like, wow, how did she have the courage to start her own business And then the courage to quit her job. So can you talk a little bit about that process, about that journey for you? Sure. Um, As you stated in the intro, I I went to a personal development conference. Um, While I was at that conference, uh, I had had actually gotten an email from a job I had applied for, uh, whether it was a thanks, but no thanks. And I wanted that job, I thought more than anything. Um, So here I am sitting in this big rah-rah session of a personal development conference, and I'm sobbing because I got this email. Um, So it just, it it made me really do a lot of thinking after the conference. And I just decided that I was ready to do something else than work for somebody else. So I started looking around and getting some ideas and I came across your program, did one of your free webinars, um, had a great uh, breakthrough session with Eva and I just knew this was it. <laughs> Aww. What was it about um, what you heard in the program or what Eva Harster is um, one of our certified virtual experts uh, in we don't have a sales team. We have members of our program who actually talk with people who are interested in learning more. So we, we women support each other. Um, so Julie, what was it that you heard that made you think, yeah, this is for me. That I could take the skills that I have learned through all my life, but especially from my former jobs, and I can offer these as services to help other people. Yeah, you absolutely can. And thank you for sharing that. Because sometimes, you know, when I do these webinars, I think, am I getting this message across? (laughs) (laughs) Julie, you already have tons of skills. You already have tons of knowledge. 
any of you listening to this who think I have to start over. No, 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 no. You do not start over. You use everything you already gained in your life, in whatever you've been doing in your past. And you simply transition those into an online business that you have for yourself. So Julie, what's it like to be your own boss now? I love it. I happen to love my boss, remember? Um, (laughs) (laughs) What do you love about it? um, The flexibility. You know, if I need to take some time off to do something for personal errands or whatever, I can work later in the night. I could do, I can set my hours and set my schedule to work when I want to. And that's one of the biggest things. And to do, you know, I do something different almost every day and I love it. Um, it's, it's just nice to wake up in the morning and love what you do. Oh my gosh. Did you ever think that was really possible? No, I mean, not before this. <laughs> no. Yeah. I, I, before this, I didn't either. I, you know, I really, I, seriously, people would tell me, well, of course you're not supposed to like your job. That's why they pay you to do it. <laughs> they Did you me. ever hear that? <laughs> yeah. They weren't paying me enough to like it. No, <laughs> <laughs> I agree with you there. Yeah. yeah. No. So what's, what message would you give people who are still working at a job that they really don't enjoy? Really just look and see what's out there and see what skills you have that you could put toward helping others. And honestly, sign up for one of your free sessions because, oh, thank you. you know, yeah, you just, you, you learn that you can take these skills and, and make your own business, you know, doing these skills and so thankful I did it. (laughs) Yeah. Had you grown up or, um, ever thought about, well, I'd really love to have my own business. Was that something that you grew up wanting or what shifted for you? If you didn't, first of all, you're assuming I grew up, um, (laughs) (laughs) yeah, God, I don't want to grow up either. I, I, Um, (laughs) you know, yeah. I'm an adult. When did that happen? <laughs> right. <laughs> um, I, you know, there was, there was times I've, I've tried a couple of, you know, that, that MLM kind of things as a side mm-hmm. hustle that didn't work. Mm-hmm. And at, at that time I was like, Oh, maybe this isn't for me. Um, but my mm-hmm. dad was self-employed my whole life, most of his oh, whole, whole okay. life. So yeah you know, knowing that, seeing that growing up too. I mean, he instilled a lot of work ethic. I mean, my mom did too, but him running his own business. So, you know, it was for a lot of years at my former job, I did, I did work remotely from home. So that kind of gave me the, Ooh, I kind of like this working from home thing. (laughs) Yeah. So yeah. So yeah. you had a little experience with that. You knew you enjoyed working from home. And that is wonderful that you had that role model in your father to that you could uh, growing up to see that it is possible to make a living having your own business. I wish I would have had yeah. that. Uh, uh, that's a really that's a benefit that you had. Congratulations on that. Mm-hmm. Um, so did you have any fear? Um, or what kind of fear did you experience when you first decided to start your own business? Um, well, yeah, there was fear. There was fear. Uh, <laughs> was I, I was scared to death. <laughs> um, it, you know, am I going to make enough money? Am I going to like doing this and working for myself? Um, I am beyond blessed to have a, an amazingly supportive husband who has, you know, allowed me to, I, I don't know what I say allowed me to do it, but supported me in making this decision and, and, you know, saying, you know, let's go for it. I think he got tired of all yeah. the, all the crabbiness after my, day, <laughs> the non, you know, the, the Sunday nights, would I not be able to sleep getting ready to go to, you know, it, what, oh, what is yeah. that called? The, the Monday when the Sunday is turning in the Monday and you're dreading the next day. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so yeah, it, it was scary. I mean, it, it was a job I had for 19 years. It was secure, you know, and, but I wasn't happy. And, you know, while I said I didn't grow up, I am getting older. So I was like, <laughs> I, I, you know, 
I, I am, I'm too old to be this miserable every single day. So yeah, Julie, I felt exactly the same way. You are, you are absolutely echoing uh, how I felt and I would cry every Sunday afternoon. I would start crying thinking about having to go into a job where they really treated me like a piece of dirt on their, on the bottom of their foot. I mean, they really did. And my self-esteem kept just being crushed every day. So you're lucky to have a husband that was supportive of you. And I've had the pleasure, not of meeting your husband in person yet. I look forward to that time, but that he's not standing back there in that dark, yeah. is he? <laughs> no, he's kicked out like everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys, you see that kind of dark uh, background behind the beautiful little uh room divider she has well at the first time we were at a virtual event together um julie attended our virtual expert virtual event and there was like a guy standing back there just standing there and i'm like julie i'm scared there's somebody gonna get you there's a creeper back there and she's like that's my husband <laughs> Yeah, that's him. And, and so now he's lovingly called the creeper by everybody in the virtual <laughs> expert group. <laughs> yeah. So those of you listening to this who don't work for yourself yet, and you're like, you know, part of what I really love about working at a, a job is all the insider jokes and the camaraderie. Guess what? We have the same thing in our virtual world, don't we, Julie? Because yes, we know yes. your husband is the creeper. Yes, <laughs> Poor guy said lovingly. I like you yeah, said right. lovingly as the creeper. <laughs> of course, he does do odd things and creepy things like move. What was that doll he kept moving around? That scared me. And all you showed was pictures of it. <laughs> yeah, him and some friends. Some friends have the doll, the creepy doll, and they were, yes, moving it around on Halloween because <laughs> they know I think it's creepy. <laughs> it is creepy. I think it is too, but it's also funny. And yeah. uh, Julie would show pictures of it on Facebook every time it was moved. Here it is. And it was always in a scary place too. It was. So, <laughs> I, know, I, know. I was scared and I didn't even live in your home. I'm not because even my here's what I, I would be like, I would so be like, oh, oh gosh, where's it going to be today? I'm afraid to go in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> So how did you overcome that fear that you felt? How did you overcome that and do it anyway? Or maybe you didn't overcome it and you did it anyway. How did you manage to face the fear and do it? Um, I think it was just some final straws at the J-O-B that it was just like, okay, I, I'm going to do this. I'm going to take the leap. And I had, like I said, I had full faith in the program and in you and all the coaches. And I, I knew my technical strengths and abilities and knew that I could make this happen. So yeah. yeah, it was a little scary at first, but I'm, I feel great about it now and very happy I did yeah. it. Well, I can tell you, I absolutely love having you as part of our community. You add so much and I know you add a lot to your clients, to their businesses too, when you work with your clients. So um, would you share what you specialize in and what made you decide to specialize in that? Well, you know, I, I've kind of <laughs> evolved as I started this. And I think people need to know that too, is that when you start this, you don't have to stay put in whatever it is. Because initially I started down one path, I've kind of moved towards another and even kind of transitioning to even a little bit more of a different path um, because my clients have organically turned into being all coaches. And it's just um, before, you know, initially I thought I wanted to work with associations. Then with, you know, I, it was more like entrepreneurs and small business owners. But now that everything's kind of organically, you know, changing into coaches, um, I'm kind of looking more towards that route, coaches and people who support coaches. And I adore all my clients. We just, it, they're, you know, the ability to have a Zoom call with them and just be able to interact with them and to get to see their personalities and for them to see mine too. And just to know that 
you know, it's such a great fit. Um, yeah. just, you know, it just, so I help, I help coaches who are kind of stuck in the weeds of they want to do all these processes and run all these programs, but when they're doing that, they don't have time to work with their clients or build out their programs. So um, I'm doing like all the technical back end work to help it, get them going with it. Email sequences, you know, website updates, um, oh, I'll get flyers, just all kinds of different technical things that I'm helping them with. So you're all around techie guru, which is a very needed specialization because there are so I mean just like you're saying to for a coach to run one uh like even let's go just do something really basic like one lead magnet there are so many things that have to be set up technically Mm -hmm. in order for that lead magnet to get out there get marketed and you're able to go in and make all of those things work together is that right yep yep set up you know the landing page that help them with the document if they need help, you know, creating the freebie, um, setting up email sequences, setting up, you know, campaigns or even courses and lessons. I mean, it's just, I run a gambit of things that I do for them and, and I love it because I love doing something different every day. Yeah, that's exciting. So I know you have a couple of certifications. Can you tell us what you're certified in? Um, I recently became Entreport certified back in October. Um, Congratulations! You know, <laughs> and yeah, it really, and putting myself out there to the community and stuff. So, you know, I'm getting some more people and, and talking to more people about that opportunity. So, um, and then, my, of course, my virtual expert certification. <laughs> yep, you're a certified virtual expert. Yes, yes you am. are. Woo, woo, woo. <laughs> I need to print that out and put that over here. <laughs> I've got my yeah, one that, over here. I, I know. I love it. Yeah. I love it. You, and pretty soon you just be plastered with certifications. <laughs> so are there other um, software programs, other technical programs that you also work on that you uh, help your clients with? Um. So besides Entreport, I, I, the email systems that I work in right now are Aweber and MailChimp, but a lot of them, they work a lot the same. So being yes. having, the, having the technical aptitude, I can pretty much get in and figure it out. <laughs> um, right. So that in, um, I work in three different project management systems with different clients with Asana, Trello, ClickUp. Um, there's all kinds. I, I, there, I, I really do. That's some good examples. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's some really good examples. And Julie, you, I mean, you're really pointing out something that's really important here. When somebody has the brain that works in the way yours does, that understands how technical things work. Um, and you've learned one in depth, like you have with Entreport. And then, um, you've learned a couple of, uh, email, um, systems. You're right. They all are very similar and it's just going in and learning the specifics of that one. Yep. Uh, yeah. So that's compared to someone with a brain like mine, um, where, because people need to understand this because not yep. everybody can do what Julie does. And I am one that cannot, because when anything is technical, Um, it's almost like I'm colorblind or dyslexic when, and I'm not either one of those, but that's kind (laughs) of what it feels like, or that all the words are in a foreign language. Because when I look at technical words, or when I look at a technical screen, it's a jumble. And I just instantly get a headache and go, oh, no, 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 no. And shut it down. (laughs) And then contact somebody like Julie. Julie? Um, so now there are a lot of business owners out there who are good at technical stuff. They're not all like me, um, technophobe. That's my title. Um, they're good at it, but does that mean that's what they should be doing? Yeah, no. In fact, I do have you know, probably half of my clients are pretty technical and, and, mm-hmm. you know, again, it's just, 
it's not that they don't know how to do it. They just need to spend their time, you know, creating their systems and their courses or working with their clients where, you know, they can't, they do have the ability to run these systems. They just don't have the time. So that's where I step Right. In. Exactly. Because you only have a certain amount of time in the day. And as a coach, you're the biggest bang for your buck as a coach is to actually spend that time coaching your clients, mm -hmm. not doing that technical stuff, even if you can do it. Because for every hour they spend doing technical work that they ain't getting paid for, right? <laughs> right? Yep. They could be coaching somebody that they are getting paid for. Yep. Yeah. And one of the myths that I like to dispel, and I want your help in doing this, Julie, is that a virtual assistant is an expense. So what I mean by that is, you just cost people money as a virtual assistant and you don't help them generate profits. So um, I totally believe that people that go through my training program, a virtual expert, what they're learning how to do is help their clients generate profit. What do you think about that? Oh, absolutely. Just, you know, back to what you said is that if they're taking the time to learn the systems and run their, those systems, they're not making money by seeing their clients. So right. it's, it's definitely an investment worth making so they can have that time, you know, to be making the money. So, um, yeah. you know, I, I've got a coach that signed up and she said, I, I don't have any clients yet, but I know that I need you in order to get myself up and running so I can get clients. So um, oh, yeah, that's know, a great and example. And you, have the, and you have the people out there who um, realize the value and don't bat an mm -hmm. eye, but then you got some that are like, yeah, you know, that's a little bit much. And, you know, then they're not the mm -hmm. ones for me. You know, I, that's right. Because guess what? They have a scarcity mindset. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because um, I know. <laughs> from building my own business and you know too from building your own business you have to invest in your business yep. and when you invest in your business it grows so much faster the yes. other thing that i want to mention about having someone with a level of technical skills that you have do the work is that you know how to do the work you know how to make the systems work in a way that's even better than the basics of what somebody who, yeah, I know how to do it. I could do it, but they don't use it every single day. So they don't know how to get the most out of that system. What right. do you think about yeah, that? Kinda, yeah. They're kind of piecemealing things together and, you know, exactly. well, I can send this here and do this here. And it's like, wait a minute, we can do all this here. And, you know, so yeah. Yeah. So you can save them money by knowing how to make things work better and faster and cheaper, yep. right? Right, exactly. And because you can do it faster since you know how to do it and you work on it every day. Right, right. And they're not having to take that time to figure the little nuances or if something doesn't work right. and then they have to figure out why it didn't work and where I thrive on that stuff. <laughs> what? Something doesn't work. I'll figure it out. <laughs> yeah. You love it. You love that problem solving. Oh, I do. <laughs> yeah. And then as you get to know your clients and what they sell, because you're helping them with their emails that go out, you're helping with their launches on the technical side of it. You can also be proactive and say, Hey, you know, I was thinking about this what if you sold this or added this or packaged this together or did this, you could earn extra. Have you ever um, thought about doing that, Julie? Um, I haven't yet. I mean, I've given suggestions on different things they should try as far as, you know, how they're running something in a system or on their website yes. or something like that. But um, yeah, which is, you know, I think is appreciated when they're, oh, I didn't oh, think yeah. about that. <laughs> yeah, you're saving them time and money there too. Well, yeah. you know, because it's, it's just like, you know, they get so focused or, or so stuck in seeing the same thing all the time 
they're right. too they're too attached to it where I'm an outsider looking in and going you know this could work better if you did this or this you should exactly. have this here <laughs> Yeah. So you're being proactive in saying, giving them suggestions yeah. on how they might improve the processes yep. to make it run better and smoother. Yeah. I love that. I love that. Um, do you, cause I don't know if you do this or not. Do you also write the SOPs on things like this, or is that something you don't, is that not something you do as part of your specialty? Um, I, I have, I mean, I need to be. <laughs> I mean, you I could do have, be doing that. You I, just I haven't could, done it yet. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, because I okay. do have a couple of um, clients that I do need to start working on their SOPs just because, you know, I, I know some people say the phrase if I get hit by a bus, but mine is if I win, you know, the Powerball. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Nobody needs that's to know a much do better way to say that right? i'm going to do that one in the future because i have I said if i get hit by a bus i know i'm like wait a minute this is like putting that stuff out in the universe i don't know i don't want that out there. Yeah. <laughs> i want the no, power I don't get hit by a bus <laughs> right yes that's right so and um let's just talk about the SOPs for a minute. So, because a lot of business owners think they have to write the SOPs. Uh, no, no, I've never written an SOP and I have, Oh, I think I have 200 SOPs wow. now. Okay. Um, the people who actually do the work, like Julie, you can write the SOP so much better than I do can, because you know, the process. Right. Know the process. Can you can write that SOP and everything, you know, just include yes. everything somebody needs to, to do it for when I win the Powerball. Yeah. <laughs> so that when you win the Powerball and you uh, email your clients and say, won the Powerball, not coming back. <laughs> <laughs> this is my two weeks notice. <laughs> you got your SOPs. Right. Here's where you can find them. <laughs> Uh, like a dream, right? I, I, I would be ex I would be expecting a party. I'm gonna tell you right now. Oh well, I'm hoping when you win the and, Powerball. Yeah, and I'll bring the creeper. Okay, good, good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's gonna love that this is in the podcast that we're calling. We're talking about. Him. <laughs> I tell him all the time. I'm like, oh, Kathy calls you a creeper again. <laughs> all right, That's, I, I'm not kidding you. I. I Right now, see in that dark spot right there, every once in a while I'll look and go, is he there? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. You, you know, you gotta have fun. Right. I would have stayed at my J-O-B if I didn't care about having fun. Right. So, yeah. Well, and the other thing I'm not sure that a lot of business owners know is that one of the top three ways that you can increase the value of your business should you choose to sell it and in my opinion everyone should build their business in a way that they can sell it if they want to um, one of the top three things that um, increase that value is having sops in place mm. so a lot of people think well yeah it's a nice to have no it's a must have mm -hmm. It's a really, really needed, not only in case somebody wins the Powerball and leaves you and has a party with the creeper, but <laughs> also, <laughs> also so that when the time comes that you're ready to sell your business, all those processes and systems are in place and documented. Yep. Yeah. So that's and you have really to keep updating thing. them too, as, as you change things or implement something new within the process, you got to make sure those are, you know, kept up to date too. Absolutely. Abs uh, yeah. They're not going to do any good if they're not up to date. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that's why you want the person who's actually running that process to be in charge of updating that. Right. So Julie, um, you've already talked about the fact that you in really enjoy working with coaches. Um, is there any particular type of coach? Is it a business coach, life coach, health coach, and men versus women are all welcome? Uh um, I'd say they're all welcome right now. They're all life and or health coaches and interesting. Yeah. And they're all women. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah. <clears throat> but you're willing to work with men and you're willing to work with business coaches. Um, okay, 
cool. Good Absolutely. to know. But life and health coaches, um, female life and health coaches, you've really been helping a lot already. So that's yeah. really cool. I love that. Cause I love, well, I love all coaches since I'm a coach and I have a health coach myself. Um, so I know how important that is. So that's, that's excellent. So anybody listening to this podcast, who's like, you know, I don't know for sure if I would be a great fit for Julie. Can you talk a little bit about the type of people that you enjoy working with? Um, what their personality might be like or how they're helping people or, you know, um, maybe they enjoy having fun. Right. They, they, <laughs> they need to be able to have some fun. Um, if you haven't figured this out, I mean, you know, this is what attracted me to Kathy's program is that, you know, <laughs> she's real. Julie and, she's and I fun. both, we both wear our crazy <laughs> right out in public. Big old badges. <laughs> Big old badges of crazy. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I see you. <laughs> now your clients don't have to be this level of crazy to uh, want to no, work with don't. you, but no, not egotistical, don't. not yeah. know-it-alls, right? Right. Um, you know, just to have um, just an easygoing personality too. I mean, it, you know, I've, I've had a couple of calls with people where it's, they're very straight laced and I'm like, mm. I mean, not that I don't mind straight laced, but I, you know, I want to have some fun and I want to work with the kind of people I want to work with. And yeah. You know, I get along fabulously with all my clients and I love yeah. that about it. You know, I don't, I don't yeah. dread working with any of them. I have a, a great time right. working with all of them. Yeah. So uh, I think you've got a really good point there, Julie, um, for both sides, whether it's a virtual expert looking for clients or a client looking for a virtual expert. Um, if you dread getting an email from your client or as a client, if you dread getting an email from your VA, that's not a good match. You should, you should not dread having a Zoom session coming up with that person. You should be looking forward to it because you know you're going to get a lot done and you're going to have, you know, a few laughs maybe or, you know, a new insight. Um, and if you're not having that, um, then move on, right? Because, I mean, I always look back at the corporate job. If I was going to not like the people... <laughs> Oh God, that's going to sound terrible. If I was going to not like my boss, I'll put that out there. If I was going to not like my boss, I'd have stayed there. <laughs> yeah. My boss didn't like me either. He thought I laughed and smelled too much. He told me, yeah, you know, all the time. Don't let the door hit you. If you don't like it here, don't let the door hit you on the way out. So, you know, he made it clear he wasn't a fan of mine either. <laughs> oh God, that's, that's a great way to say that. He was not a fan of mine. <laughs> I want to work with people. I want to work with VAs who are my fans, mm -hmm. who can't wait to support me and help me. And that's who you are, Julie. You are your client's biggest fans. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You're their cheerleader. You're not yeah, only I, there to help them do the tech work, but also, hey, you go, girl, right? Right, right. And, and can do it in a fun way, too, and not just be so, you know, uppity about things and not all the emails are you know so spot on professional there's some joking back and forth even in the zoom calls like yesterday I had one with a coach who she she's kind of going in a bunch of different directions but she her she said that did I break up for a second I said no she said okay because I just got a thing that says my internet is, is unstable unstable she says how does it know <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, girl, oh my God, you, I love that. When you start to get the message that says, lady, you're unstable, <laughs> then you have a problem. <laughs> oh that is so good. I love that so much. <laughs> I know. I'm like, oh, mine tells me that all the time. <laughs> I know. You are unstable. What? Yeah. How did you know? <laughs> Yeah. Oh, Julie, I, I love that. That is such a great story. Such a great story. So um, we are here talking today. It's January 21st, 2021. And I know that like you've been talking, you're getting filled up with clients. So as of this date, do you have a couple of openings in case anybody listening to this? It's like, I need a tech guru and I really want to work with somebody like Julie. 
Do you have room for a couple of more clients? Oh yeah. Yep. I'm, I'm Good. open still and talking to people almost on a weekly basis. So sometimes it's people that just need a little thing here or there that I am happy to help them with. And, um, it doesn't necessarily always come down to getting paid either. Like if it's just one little thing, somebody needed help with a website update. I did it. She then connected me with somebody else. One of my coaches, I, you know, answered a, a plea for help on Facebook in a, in a group I'm in and now I work for her. So, you know, there's just, um, yeah, it's, it's great. And I, yes, I do have room for more clients at this time. Yeah. So um, let me see if I understand correctly what you're saying here. You don't need to have a humongous project in order to come to you and say, I need help. You can have one little thing that's aggravating you and you'll have a call with them to see if you can help them Absolutely. because that's the kind of person you are. And you, and you know that giving back like that always is a good thing. And Julie, yeah. I, I see you in my group. You support others consistently. You're always upbeat and positive. You're, th- what you guys are hearing now with Julie, this is her all the time, which I love about you. Well, thank you. Yep. Uh, yeah. You're going to get the real me. <laughs> <laughs> so those who are listening who are like, boy, I better be one of the first in line to get on a call with Julie before she does get filled up. How do people get in touch with you to get that free consultation scheduled? Um, best way is just go to my website, which is tackle your to do.com and either on my contact page, honestly, any page, there is a link down at the bottom that says to schedule a free 30 minute session. Yeah. And Julie would be happy to talk with you and you may not even know yet what you really need help with. You might have one little idea of, hey, I need this, but I, I'm still overwhelmed with other stuff and I'm not even sure what she might help me with, you'd be able to provide that consultation and help them identify what you could help them with. Is that right? Oh, absolutely. And honestly, if it's something, I'll, I'll be open with them too and say, if it's something that I don't know, I have a whole community of virtual experts I can reach out to and connect them to. So, you know, yeah. that's the great thing about this community too. Right. So this is a really valuable free consultation that Julie is offering to anybody who wants to go to her website, tackleyourtodo.com. We will have that link in the show notes also. And Julie, thank you so much for being on here with me today. Thanks for the laughs too. (laughs) Thanks for having me. I didn't think I'd be anything else than laughing with you. I mean, (laughs) (laughs) Hey, yeah, I mean, anybody listening to this who's like, what's it really like to be a VA or a virtual expert? This is what it's really like in my program, in my community, because we just, it, we make a lot of money. We have, we're very powerful women and we laugh a lot. Thank and you. thanks, we also support each other a lot. Thanks to wonderful people like Julie. Well, thank you, Kathy. And, you know, I wouldn't be where I'm at today without you and your program and your amazing team. Oh, thank you. I think I just got a halo. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Um, Thank you again. And um, tackle your to do.com. Bye, everybody. Thank you for listening to Dare to Leap. Say hello and access additional resources at virtualexperttraining.com. There, you'll be able to connect with Kathy to share your feedback and join her community. Join us again soon on Dare to Leap. Until then. (laughs) 